everybody. I'm doing a 30 minute session for a client. I'm gonna be sharing psychic wisdom and energy healing. If any of you are interested in exploring a session with me, you can do so by visiting my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. I'm also on Patreon at patreon.com slash abbynormalswisdomquest. All right, I'm gonna read your goals out loud. Thank you so much for the opportunity to connect with you today. And thank you so much for sharing with us here on YouTube. Oh my gosh, these are some interesting goals. So, so your request is, I like to do a healing style session on cocaine addiction with one of my spirit guides. <laughs> okay. Hmm. You know, it's like, as I read this, I have this really dried image. It's flat and kind of it reminds me of the earth on some level, like a really dry terrain and it's cracked dry. And it's like a mirror with cracked dry patches on it. And it's not white by any means, it's brown. And then it has dark lines in between the lighter brown. This looks like a cracked, dry world on a flat sheet. Something about that image, it's not just about the cracking, it's like a soul being split into places or drying up. I'm not quite fully understanding it. I'm just gonna keep looking at this image. That seems to be where they wanna start already. <laughs> usually get to take a moment here to get in the zone, but that just appears. Okay. You know what kind of guide is with us today? A guide that has a really funny sense of humor. The funny guide is showing us, it's like a mirror, but it, it has a sand, um, you know how you can get those jars and people do like sand art and then they'll they'll have like a whole artistic scene made out of different colors of sand and then you can see it in the jar as you turn it but here we have sand art on a piece of glass that's the shape of a square and it's pretty i mean it just looks like cracked earth really it's got like a darker lines that go through it's like spider web type shape on a, a square mirror you don't even see the mirror part because it's covered in sand it's either like a dark brown or a light brown and so the funny guide has like a little bit of wet on his finger and touches the sand and then he starts to create like an adolf hitler mustache i'm not sure why but he's like ha, like tapping and almost like putting makeup on and showing this hitler mustache and it echoes to me that it's like rubbing shit right here between your nose and your upper lip. It's just like putting a little shit right there. It's not even showing it going into your nose. It's just a little bit of shit right there. Keep saying that, okay? Literally like poop. Like take your finger, put it into some dog poop, and then put it right here and make an Adolf Hitler mustache. It's funny. But it's like take the sand and then do it like this, okay? And I see you and this guy don't necessarily get along, actually. And you, what you translate him as is basically a man that has too much. All right, I see two 20-something guys. And this 20-something guy represents you. So you could be guy A, okay? And this 20-something guy is guy B, which is your funny spirit guide. And you see Guy B as, um, <sighs> you don't like the, he rubs you the wrong way. He thinks he's funny. He, um, he sometimes, somehow convinces girls to like him. He's, it's very, uh, it's very kind of macho man issues. <laughs> it's like macho men at the bar issues. So is he, he just like somebody you know, and anytime you run into this person, you maybe you're cordial, but you really don't like him. And so that's how this funny guy kind of rubs off on you. 
But we're going to take the ego out of it. And for the first time, guy A, you, are able to just talk to guy B without any macho man stuff in the way or any ego stuff or guy B knows how to ruffle feathers or something. None of that's going on here. You're just two people. You're just two people. You still want to punch him in the face. You still want to knock him down. I see a bowling ball hitting the pins and getting a strike. And you're waking up from a hangover and this douchebag that was at your party last night um, thought it would be funny to put shit mustache right there. Um, and you're going to get that guy. He always thinks he's being funny. He's not very funny. He's just a jerk. I don't want him ba back at my party ever again. It's kind of like this attitude is starting to brew up again. I'm going to kill him. I'm going to kill him. <laughs> he's the type of friend that would write dick on your forehead because you passed out first and get everybody to laugh and think it was funny. And he'd write it with a Sharpie marker so it would stay there for like several weeks or something. Annoying like that. Somehow this is... This is helping. I'm kind of in a shower space with it's foggy everywhere because the shower does that it's hot it steams up the mirrors and all that stuff but it's not water in there it's not mist it's cocaine actually and it's awful i'm trying to get it off of my face but now I can't get any water and so it's, it's I'm building up upon my face and it's getting into my eyes and I, I can't wash it off. And now I'm walking around with a bunch of dust collected on my face and it's actually building up. It's building up so I have this like caked on dust, white dust face. And I can't find my way and I'm starting to bump into walls and there's actual other bodies here and I'm saying, oh, excuse me, sorry, excuse me, sorry, and I can't see. And then I'm wondering, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? How stupid? Why am I doing this? What did I wind up doing yet again? And now I'm stuck in this place again. What am I? Why would I put myself in this situation again? Why do I keep doing this to myself? And then I see Guy B is laughing and you've got dick written on the top of your head and you're just a dumb dick, like you stupid dick. I, but he's the dick, not me. Are you in a conflict with yourself? That seems to be a th collective theme right now. Like we're in conflicts with ourselves louder than maybe usual. I feel like Guy B is also you. You are in conflict with yourself. So then is he a spirit guide? Is he an aspect of you that's guiding you? Does it make you feel like somebody just wrote dick on your forehead? And maybe you feel like that when you wake up and realize, or maybe you don't wake up, maybe you just stay up all, all night, all day. And then you're thinking about how did I wind up in this situation again? And all the white dust is on your face and you can't see clearly. And then you got the shit Adolf Hitler mustache. I mean, this is the type of language I need to use. This is what this is what I'm called to how I'm called to guide this. Okay. It's supposed to feel a bit humility, hum, humiliating. It's supposed to feel... Supposed to feel embarrassed and humiliated. You're supposed to feel like the butt of the joke. You're supposed to feel stupid. And when you feel like you just woke up and saw stupid in the mirror and it was you, It'll make you change your mind about what makes you stupid and what makes you not stupid at all. Because you seem to have this rhetoric inside yourself. 
And it's like um, there's a class about who you are, a classiness. And to step into something a little more classy. And then I hear chassis. And I see a really sweet car with a really hot chassis. <laughs> and I think of a really good looking woman. And I see a hand spank her on the butt. And her butt just kind of in slow motion jiggles. And her dress, it kind of, I don't know how it makes little sparkly noises, but then she has a little giggle and she wears pink and it sparkles, but she, there's something very flawless and feminine about her and she's not, um, she's got body, so she's got a really great body, so there's, it's not, I don't know why I keep thinking of making love to a skeleton versus making love to some body and she's got a great chassis <laughs> and this is the life this is the life a great car and a great girl and classiness but sometimes it teeters in this direction that um, we're stepping up and having a lot of fun. We're taking fun and a good time and we're going to amp it up and we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to have so much fun until the next day when you have dick written on your forehead. And then what is the meaning of it all? Wasn't it good enough just to have the car and the girl? Did you really have to go that far? Yes, because we got to push the limits here. We got to see how far we can take this thing, right? And you just do that and then you do it again and you do it again and you do it again until you realize that you have to ask the questions about moderation. And is this what I want in my life? Is this bettering me is this bettering my life or is this just something I'm lost in right now is it making me more interesting to people is making it me have more friends is it making me have more fun is it making me like myself more and what really is the depth of, of authentic value to this process for its fake value it's fun while it lasted value until now I'm having a conflict with guy A and guy B of myself I hate that funny guy I hate him he thinks he's so freaking funny and you do this to yourself Okay, we're making progress here. Everything's pretty quiet right now. Everything's pretty quiet. Something makes me feel like I want to, like I want to lose it uh, emotionally. Like, um, let me just experience this for a minute here. It's silent. I'm kind of now the type of person I'm looking at my face in the mirror and I'm just blinking as I look at my face in the mirror as I don't know whether to feel alive today or highly disappointed or proud of me for still getting through another day or who am I or why am I me and why is this my life and it's kind of like this silent blinking with these questions that aren't really ar articulated loud enough in the head that they're acknowledged and answered they're just kind of there just kind of in the blinking looking in the reflection in the mirror okay but there's no decision here. 
And I feel the heart is beating and the heart is beating as best as it can. That's how it feels. The heart is beating as best as it can. And now I'm starting to see images of broccoli, okay? And I put, I feed your heart lots of broccoli. <laughs> I was like, here's another piece of broccoli. Ow. Oh, good. Now here's another piece of broccoli. Ow. I don't know why your heart is eating broccoli. It needs broccoli right now. <laughs> here's another piece of broccoli. I just keep feeding it broccoli. It's so weird. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's so weird. <laughs> it keeps eating it. When will it stop? <laughs> oh, you know what? I had this thought once. And this is back when I would go out all the time in college. And I mean, we, the parties and the nonstop drinking for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. And hours. And I had this sort of epiphany that if I can dedicate so many hours to drinking that much alcohol, why can't I dedicate the same amount of time to drinking water? And why would I choose to drink alcohol like relentlessly, like it's my flipping job, you know? If I could relentlessly drink water like it's my flipping job, and why don't I try that on for size? You know, if I'm going to try this on, then why can't I try that on? It never really stuck. I never really tried to get drunk off of water or something. But I thought about it, okay? Because I was really thinking if I could put that much alcohol in my body, why couldn't I put that much water, you know? So if you can put that much cocaine in your body, why can't you eat that much broccoli? <laughs> Your heart really likes the broccoli more than it likes the cocaine, okay? Just give it some broccoli, please, all night long. Let's see how much broccoli that you can consume in an evening into the next day and then fight ever going to bed and eat more broccoli, okay? You need to eat more broccoli. It's the only thing you should do with all those hours of time. Eat broccoli. You would tell me that that would just be like a ridiculous thing because nobody can just keep eating broccoli for hours and hours and hours. So you would get so full and you would get so not feeling good. And it's like, but you could do cocaine for hours and hours and hours and you would get so full of it and it would be so hard on your heart and you keep doing it even if you didn't want to anymore and you just keep doing it and now the sun's up and how good does that make you feel but let's just keep doing it and you know you need to stop and you can't stop it's almost as crazy as just eating broccoli for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours like We're going back to the mirror because I, that, for some reason, that conversation was very overwhelming for your energy field. It, it did. I. Oh gosh, that was. I. Uh, believe it or not, that conversation was really hard on your energy field <sighs> because it created a shattering, and I'm starting to see the piece of glass with the sand art on it. I guess. And oh, and you have um, parts of yourself like little skeleton people with axes, and they're kind of like um, they're funny because like, <laughs> like their little teeth are chattering like really really fast, and they have these axes, and they're breaking down all these like mirrors and the mirror place where you're blinking into your reflection, and it's not really going anywhere. But then all these <laughs> like. <laughs> With like chattering teeth, like like chattering. It's like teeth chatter, and they're just ridiculous. They're tiny, like little mini skeleton people with axes and like <laughs> like crazy. And then there's all these mirrors forever and ever and ever. They're just keep like bashing more mirrors down. I, I don't know why it keeps making me laugh so much, but it, it's they reacted to the broccoli and they this was overwhelming for them and their only way to cope is to react by chattering their teeth and getting axes to break things down. And I started to feel sad for them. 
and they have no life left, they're dead. And they can't ever get their life back, they're dead. <laughs> Keep saying that. I say then just accept it. Accept it. And get over yourself. You're dead then, accept it. Why is that anybody else's problem? Because they want, it's almost like they want someone to see them and to know about them so that they could exist. Because they know that they need to accept death, and but they can't accept it because they can't accept it until someone else acknowledges them. But I think that's just an excuse, really. I, I don't want to acknowledge you. And, and because you want that so bad, I don't want anybody to ever acknowledge you. And I want you to be in a little box with all the other weird chattering skeletons that desperately want someone to acknowledge you. And I want no one to acknowledge you. Because when you want something that badly, then even if you were to get it, it would never be enough. It would never be enough. And so out of compassion and mercy, I put you in a box and I will not allow you to ever have that so that you can finally be free and that you can finally let go because that is not what you need. This is quite sick because I started to see this like weird flesh eating disease on your back and I can see your spine is exposed. And I see remnants of these little skeleton people are kind of eating away at the flesh in your back. They're really eating away at it and they're gnawing. It's like this flesh eating disease and they're like eating around your spine and around your shoulders and around. It's like gross and I can see their little skull bodies and they're tiny this time, like even tinier now, like an inch in size. And they like keep doing this. They're like burrowing around in there. But I need the part of you that's just mindlessly looking into your own eyes in the mirror to wake up. Wake up. Wake up. This is sort of a, okay, okay, hear me out here. We're actually tra traversing an interdimensional space and it feels like you just took a leap off of a cliff to no man's land and so we're in a dead zone. In the dead zone. <laughs> I don't know if you guys remember, I think there were Geico commercials and this was like maybe in 20, I don't know, 15 or 2014 around Halloween. I specifically remember this dead zone commercial and it was about the towels were kind of scratchy. And it, <laughs> and it was US Cellular. I think it was US Cellular because the guy was trying to get into a motel and, and the guy told him that it was a dead zone. And it, <laughs> and it was creepy, you know? And it was like all creepy. And then the guy said, no, it's not. See, I have US Cellular. And then the motel owner was really upset about this and then told him that the towels were kind of scratchy. I, like every time I think of dead zones, I think of that commercial. It makes me laugh. So you're just like out in a dead zone. <laughs> and the towels are kind of scratchy. <laughs> no, there's no towels here. Like it's a legit dead zone and you do not have US cellular. Sorry. <laughs> you're in a dead zone. Okay. And this is our, an interdimensional transition between something you're doing in the energy world, traversing in spirit dimension space and how you're translating it back to the present human world space. And it's going to be strange when it comes to our relationship with time and whatever the dead zone version of time is and how this relates to your past, your present, your future, how this relates to all the versions of yourself that you've been in every cycle of eternity you've ever existed in and blah, blah, blah. So it feels like you're just kind of going nowhere. 
And when I say wake up in the mirror and you're kind of going nowhere in this dead zone, you step off a cliff and it's just like you can't get to the ground. You can't find your next destination. You're, um, you're kind of getting nowhere, but you are, you're not, you're not going nowhere. You're, you're actually doing just fine. You're traversing the dead zone just fine. And so I'm, okay, now that I know that, give me just a moment here, because now it's going to be easier to tra transform the skeleton and flesh eating back disease. And <laughs> it's going to be easier to get your eyes to blink properly where your light is returned to them and your reflection in the mirror. Oh, okay. Because that's, I, okay. <coughs> So basically, I'm you and I'm looking, this is really scrambling my brains. And just trying to get you to wake up. Come on, come on, come on. Very, it's like, it's like punching in the head, like, come on, get in there. Like, uh, wake up in there, <laughs> wake up in there, you. You don't, you don't want to look through the, those hollow eyes. You say, I don't, it, it, it's almost like a weird story, quote the raven concept, and you kind of echo it like a ghostly mirage, is I don't want to look into those hollow eyes. It's like a dark poet. Because the reflection and is a much scarier thing. Okay, this is good, I say. This is connected to that dead zone and is connected to a very dark, slimy being. And it's attached to your solar plexus, your stomach, emotional gut region, and attached to your sacral chakra, okay? Wouldn't doubt it if it's attached to your root, but it, because we have this flailing and not grounded sensation in the dead zone, but it's really saying solar plexus and sacral chakra. Um, it's really saying these. And this is strange, um, glossy, liquidy, gross thing is here. And he's in, the refle in your reflection in the mirror. And through the gaping hollow eyes of yourself. Traversing also the dead zone. Not finding the ground beneath your feet. Quote the raven. I'm not allowed in here to speak for you. Because as soon as I talk, I my heart, um, something goes to my heart. And my heart's made out of purple. And sh like this. Because you need to find your own voice now. You need to speak your own words, your own language from your heart, from your soul. And you, ah, this is me, and is saying something like you are weak, you are, it's like weak and pathetic. It just, uh, you're, I just see a grown man looking at you and wanting to put you into a smaller and smaller and smaller box inside of yourself and to have fun watching you doing it to yourself because you didn't step up to that man. You let that man crush you beneath his pathetic boot. And then everything he said was true. And now you're still crying about it. You're one of these skeleton teeth chompers as well. And you come from the art on the glass. And instead of them flesh-eating you, 
They just want you to find your own voice and speak. Because that pain is only communicating that it is time for you to almost like don't let the pain eat you alive. You, it's almost, it has something to do with your voice and your, the strength in your own shoes and your stance, even if it is a dead zone. You decide where the ground is that you stand on. So now you conquer the dead zone by deciding where the ground is that you stand on. And it's not dead at all, it's alive with you. And I'm not going to tolerate that because you say, boy, this is so hard. And, and I keep showing you, I can't tell you or agree with you on that. I have to tell you that n I disagree with you on that. Even after it was like wrench my heart sh like this, I can tell you that I disagree. This is complicated. No, I disagree. It isn't complicated. So I want you to say that this isn't complicated stuff. And I can define the ground that I stand on. And instead of the pain eating me alive, I can actually speak from the ground that I choose to stand on. And now what was eating me alive is not anymore. And it has something to do with you owning your own voice and owning who you are. You speaking. It's like standing up for yourself because nobody writes dick on your forehead. <laughs> Unless it's Guy B, I guess. <laughs> you doing it to yourself. Don't even ever do that to yourself either. Don't put yourself in that situation. You decide the ground that you stand on. And you have the courage and the strength and the goal to own it. What is the right strength of character that you want to emanate as you in your life, right? And to the world. What kind of strength of character, you know, what type of, uh, how do you want to hold your head up to, to the public? I always felt better when I treated myself good. Waking up in the morning was always easier, you know? And I actually started to really like feeling good every day. And I didn't need something that made me feel like crap every day. I wanted to feel good every day, and in feeling good, I could do more with my life. And I actually liked doing more with my life than feeling like crap. Was I trying to prove something to God? Was I mad at life? Was I mad at something that was my choice for? Or was it just fitting into the crowd? Was it college behavior? Was it growing up? What was it? And what are my needs now, you know? What is it that I value about life now? What is it that I love most about life is feeling good. I like feeling good, you know? And I know inside you, you like feeling good too. There's a lot more class to feeling good than there is to feeling like crap and trying to freaking finagle your way through another day. <laughs> That's what I meant to share. I want to ask real quick is there a specific spirit guide that has helped us through this message that i can present to you because i tell you guides like to blend into my experience blend into the background sometimes they come forward to the forefront but they're part of the message and through the message you can you can mold and shape it into one energy body and then you can meet a consciousness and our guides are kind of integrated into our lives. So they're not just separate people. They're going through this life with us. They're part of our good conscience. And then they're part of something more than that when we open up our psychic senses. 
And sometimes our guides are challenging us and they can be bad, part of our bad conscience too, <laughs> to help us not make weak decisions by convincing us to make weak decisions. <laughs> they do that too. All right, then your guide looks like a very healthy mushroom, actually. That's white. And I like my favorite kind of pizza is mushroom pizza. I love mushrooms. I love them. I think they taste so delicious. And you're very healthy mushroom. Your guide is a very healthy mushroom. Like there's a reason why there's a connection here. And wears a big hat like a sombrero. And it has, it's like the perfect filaments. When you put your finger, if you can touch a perfect mushroom, you can feel those like little filaments in there. It's like so crazy. Mushrooms are so crazy, like in the wild, you know? And then has a big um, sombrero like hat that he wears. And he kind of reminds me of like a, I don't know, a mariachi band man. And he's got a big, 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 big guitar. And there's something about him that means a lot to me. Actually, because he represents unusual things that we like and the unusual things that we like about the things that we like. Like, I love mushrooms. Not many people like mushrooms or even like mushroom pizza. But one thing I loved doing as a kid, if I found a mushroom, was, was picking them and turning them upside down and then rubbing my finger on the little, I know, the weird, crazy underneath of their hats. And this guide represents unusual things that we like and the us unusual things that we like about the unusual things that we like. And he also represents someone um, who emanates being laid back and really allowing yourself to get immersed into peaceful music, even music that comes from the heart and music that brings fun and joy into your life. And he shows a beautiful sunset and a comfortable environment, kind of at a restaurant, enjoying some live music, and it's just a nice time. Out with really good friends and doing nothing but just having a nice time, a good night, and being glad it all went this way without anything extra. And sometimes the things that we like have a different way of liking us back. Like with cocaine and then what is an addiction? Liking something too much we need to find balance. All right, it's the message. Thank you so much for this. Thank you everybody for watching. I hope you all have an awesome day.